Hi Promised Land families, my name is Kara and I'm so excited that you've joined us for another week of Home Church for Kids. We've learned a lot the last week about Jesus and this week we get to learn a lot about his friends, the disciples. Before we jump into our big God story, would you join me in dancing and singing praises to God? Come on, let's go. Of my head, way, way down to my toes. I can't keep it all inside. I want to jump with all my mind from the top of my head, way, way down to my toes. I can't keep it all inside. I want to dance with all my what's in our mail today. We've been practicing a verse. Let's see if it's the same one. It is. It's Zephaniah 317a. Let's do it together. The Lord your God is with you. 
the mighty warrior who saves. Do you know what a mighty warrior is? That's a name for God that means that he's powerful in a battle. This comes from the book of Zephaniah, chapter 3, 17, and A means that it's the first part of the verse. Now let's do it with our actions. The Lord your God is with you the mighty warrior who saves. Can you do that with me? The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. Should we do it in a silly voice? Should we say it super fast like a bunny? All right, let's do it. The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. <sighs> that was super fast. Should we do it one more time even faster? The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. Zephaniah 317a. Whoa, you guys are super fast. Great job, friends. All right, friends, it's time to peek inside our What's It box today. I'm gonna take a look and then I'll give you some clues. All right, friends, your first clue is that this item is long and thin. Do you have any ideas? All right, it's nothing that's alive. It's something that you can use to do something else. Hmm. It's something that a lot of people like to do in the spring and summertime. Do you have any ideas? Let's see. This item is used to catch something. Any idea what it could be? Those are some really great guesses. Are you ready to see what's inside? This is a teeny tiny fishing pole. It's long and it's thin. It's used to do something and to catch something. What do we catch with this? That's right, we can catch fish. Hmm, I wonder what a fishing pole has to do with our Big God story today. Are you ready to find out? It's time for the Hey everybody, my name is Chris Oots. I'm here to tell you about the Big God Story this week. Where do we find the Big God Story? Anybody? That's right, we find it in the Bible. And before we start with the Big God Story, let's ask somebody to come help us learn about the Big God Story. Who should we ask? That's right, let's say a quick prayer to God. Dear Lord, we just ask that you come and bless us, quiet our minds, our hearts, and our souls so we can learn more about the big God story. Okay, today's big God story, and you got a little hint already with the what's it, but God had a really big plan for the whole world. And part of his plan was to send a savior to help us, save us from our sins. What are sins? Does anybody know what a sin is? It's when we do something wrong or we make bad choices. Um, so we needed somebody to, to save us from those sins so we could be with God the Father. So he sent Jesus Christ to save us from our sins. And so Jesus was a big part of the big God plan. Well, one day, God went to teach the people. And while he was down teaching the people, he saw some people using, not this, but who uses this? That's right, it's fishermen. And, but the fishermen that Jesus saw, they were using nets, and they were cleaning their nets. And these nets, they're big, big, big nets, because like this catches one fish at a time, but the nets, they, 
they catch just lots of fish, hopefully. Now, Jesus went down and asked the four men how things were going, and one of the men named Simon, he said, not very good. We, we've been fishing all night, and we, we didn't even catch one fish. And Jesus said, I want you to go right out there, kind of in the middle, and I want you to throw your nets off the left side of the boat. And so, you know, even though they hadn't caught a fish, Simon, he thought there was something pretty special about this Jesus character. So they went out, they threw these nets off the side, the left side, like Jesus had said, and they started pulling the nets up. Do you think they caught any fish? Oh yes, that's right. And boy, did they catch fish. I mean, they had so, so many fish. The nets started breaking. Fish were swimming away. It's tipping the boat over. They, another boat had to come out and help them bring out the nets. Even then, there were so many fish. This was such an amazing miracle that Jesus performed that the boat started sinking. They barely made it back into the shore. It's, it, I mean, it was, I wish I could have seen. Um, but Jesus then, when they got back, remember how I said Jesus was going to have other people help him? Well, these were the first four he asked. He said, please, come with me. What do you think they said, especially after seeing this miracle? I mean, they hadn't caught a fish all night, and now hundreds of fish. That's right. They said yes. So those were the first four, and eventually he asked eight more men to become disciples. Can you say that word? Disciples. What is a disciple? I'm glad you asked. A disciple is someone who learns from a teacher. They learn by listening to him or her, by following him or her, by acting like him or her, and eventually they become a teacher, and then they can teach others. And that's what Jesus did when he went to heaven to be with God. He asked those 12 to go out and become teachers and get some disciples to teach them about God the Father and himself, Jesus Christ. So how, how could we be disciples? Who could we follow? Who knows a lot about God? Our mom, our dad, our leaders at church. They want us to become disciples so that we can learn about God and Jesus. So if we listen to our mom and dad and teachers and we follow them, and we act like them, we can learn a lot about Jesus and God, and eventually we get to know God better. And how do we get to know God better? Besides mom, dad? That's right, guys, the Bible. And this story that I'm telling you about, it's here, it's in the Bible, it's in James. So that's what the goal is. The goal is that we learn so much about Jesus that we can go out and teach others about Jesus and God and fulfill God's big plan. In the Bible, people would oftentimes use words to remind each other of things that were true about God. Today, I want you to find someone to bless with your words. Let's practice that with each other right now. Repeat after me. May you know God's love and share his good news everywhere you go. May you follow Jesus wherever he calls you. Have a great week, Promised Land friends. We'll see you next time.